With TDU's news of proposed fixes, updates, roll-up plan, etc., etc., dropping today, Monday the 30th, it seemed natural to wait until said day to come to see what kind of a difference it would make. So now that I've waited for the server maintenance to be over, tested out the update, what kind of a difference has it made? We're going to be talking about the differences it has or hasn't made, unfortunately, because yes, this is a double-edged sword once again, and also talking about some of the future plans which they have, because, like I said before, I'm still mixed on the game. I gave it a 5 out of 10 in my kind of review, kind of uh, eulogy for TDU Solar Crown. And of course, if the game does get improvements over time, I will still be talking about it because that's what the channel's about. It's talking about games, etc. First things first, what has been improved and what has not been improved. Immediately jumping into the game, I would say that there were a couple of notable differences. Cars seem smoother, it's less jittery, and crucially, one massive improvement I've noticed immediately is that myself, like many of you had the recurring bug of the map not registering that you'd been to certain locations. So all of the roads would show up as unlocked, but then certain meeting points, etc., or even entire car dealerships would not be available to fast travel and would show up as if you'd never been there, which is incredibly annoying given that you cannot fast travel to races. That was already a feature anyway. You already couldn't do that and still can't. But it meant that if you wanted to go to a race down the bottom of the map, you'd literally have to drive to the bottom of the map over and over again. And then you'd have like a 50-50 chance of the game remembering whether you'd done the event or not or even a 50-50 chance of being able to do the event at all because the server might not join. But unfortunately, there is always the yin to the yang, and on this occasion, well, uh, this was the result when I tried to enter a race. My first attempt at an event, not particularly caring for online players, I just wanted to do it myself to, you know, see what kind of condition the game was in now, and that's not exactly a great start. So very, very mixed is my first personal uh, experience with the game. It could be a variety of things that are beyond just the game. I do frequently notice, for example, that my internet is not as good in the evening, I think, because more people get online after work and school and college and whatever they're doing, so it could be something my end, so let's give it some benefit of the doubt. Even so, Gran Turismo 7 still boots up just fine on the same console, so there's only so much leeway I can give it. Beyond that, though, I would say if you were looking to jump back into the game, I wouldn't say that today is necessarily a particularly huge reason to do so, but I do still want to talk about a couple of things in recent rollouts that TDU announced. You kind of have to be following them on certain platforms to even see these things. So, for example, I see them on Facebook, but aside from that, they don't really pop up in my feed that much. And some of these things were their priorities for the future, other things which they have planned to fix, etc. So let's dive into that, because for those who are interested to continue playing, or maybe in a similar way to when I talk about Gran Turismo 7 news or updates, some of you use those videos to decide if you're even going to bother, you know, reinstalling Gran Turismo 7 or jumping into the game this particular month. Let's do the same thing for TDU Solar Crown. So I'll give you the Clift's notes, if you will. First things first, there was some interesting information regarding the testing of the servers. If you'll recall in my longer video, my essay, if you will, one of the things which I mentioned is that it felt like they squandered the time that they had for, you know, the beta stuff, that kind of thing, to learn about the load of the servers. Well, it seems that although that ended up feeling true, they did apparently put more time into trying to test the servers than they did with TDU2. And one of the head guys involved was involved in TDU2 as well. So some of the original team is still there, regardless of Nacon. That's interesting, because how bad could it have been then? I mean, it can't really get any worse than an unplayable game, which is what it was for most of us on day one. So I find that very curious. How bad would it have been, I guess, even worse? Somehow. Another thing which they specifically mention is uh, not necessarily, of course, responding to me, but responding to folks in general about having more of a solo aspect to the game. They did mention something which I can't say I've noticed so far, partially because of this issue where I still cannot currently join an event, where I think they mentioned something like that you could turn off matchmaking or something in these events, which, like I said, I haven't had the chance to really dive into that, so if any of you have, I'd be very curious to hear about that. That sounds like a, a step in the right direction, at least, something which should have been in the game from day one, really, but there you go. Kind of a Gran Turismo sport career mode all over again. And in terms of their priorities, etc., for the future, they've said that their main priority is, of course, getting the game to run smoothly, to get servers running properly, get races running properly, allowing, you know, player versus player stuff to actually work in the way that it's supposed to. In some ways, like I said, they seem to have improved that, in others, not so much. They have a couple of secondary priorities, which include the potentiality of cross-platform events between PC and console. I'm glad that that's a second priority, because if you can't get it running properly on one, then let's leave that kind of thing until later on, which 
they are. They also have a secondary priority of having uh, cross-region play, because at the moment there isn't really any of that, you're locked into a particular region. To me that makes total sense. If the servers can't even cope with that, then it would be a horrific decision to try and have, you know, India versus America or whatever else on the map. Completely different time zones, different internet speeds, whatever the case may be. They have also mentioned that they are aware of the AI mismatching issue in terms of how the AI drives. They've mentioned having specific parameters which they can change in terms of the AI being more or less aggressive, more or less uh, efficient with how they drive. And they did mention having an issue where it was kind of turned up to 11 in terms of what the AI could do. And it was just pushing vehicles to their limit in a way that no human or very few humans actually could. Plus the cars were optimized because the AI uses tuning as well. So if the AI uses tuning and a particular player doesn't know how to do that, well, it's going to be much more difficult, especially when it scales up with your level rather than being able to choose how difficult you want the AI to be. And I think I mentioned that in my other video that I found the AI to be a bit arbitrary and a bit awkward in that sense where it kind of just is what it is and you can't do much about it. They've also mentioned that they will be having nerfs and buffs on certain vehicles, you know, four-wheel drive, for example, having huge advantages, perhaps more events focusing in more so on rear-wheel drive only or front-wheel drive only, four-wheel drive only, to really maximize the use of other vehicles. Again, I believe I did mention that being a good idea to have, like, specific manufacturer events, specific car type events, not only because it feels fairer and also doesn't have just the same car being OP all the time, which gets boring, but also it means that you get to use more of the cars and experience more of the game. One of the things which I found kind of weird is that they're still discussing the compensation which is coming for players, those of us who were originally playing the game or more so couldn't play the game. They've said that they're still discussing what that could be. That was as recently as about three days ago in their video on YouTube. One of the things which I found a bit odd from what they said in that video though was that the discussion has kind of moved around and away from the idea of it being a credit compensation so we're not necessarily going to get credits you know cash in the game to make up for it that seems like kind of a no-brainer as part of a, a reward system and to me their logic seems pretty weak on that one as well saying that that would just ruin the experience to get like a million solar coins that wouldn't ruin my experience especially given how expensive vehicles are in this game so i find that a bit odd and i really hope it doesn't end up being some stupid exclusive livery or a piece of clothing because yes we can do a lot more with credits so to actively avoid that being the reward well there's very little else that many of us would actually want so i'm not really sure what kind of compensation they had in mind there in terms of stuff coming to the game well of course now we are technically in season one of the solar crown kind of era uh, they still have the planned rollout of stuff like ibiza the casino etc in future but for now they have the uh, solar crown beginning in terms of the worldwide competition for that one the free solar crown pass for everyone that's season one of that one live events are coming into the game as well because of course the servers are now working so well that it's a great time for live events <laughs> great great priorities there guys uh, performance changes performance improvements to the game server fixes as well this this particular uh, update has apparently fixed over 300 bugs. Uh, apparently the server connection wasn't one of them in my case and graphics improvements as well particularly on the ps5 so i'm playing on the ps5 which would explain why mine seem to look better and crisper and better lighting so you should see that in especially some of the footage at the start of the video when i was driving the audi r8 so as i think you can kind of tell this is a, a very mixed bag really it's it's good intentions uh, i would urge you to watch the video that they put out i'll link it in the description it's about 20 minutes long and i think it's well worth a watch because as especially if you have a, a negative view of the developers themselves, it might help you to kind of improve that view a bit because for me, I'd like to think that in that other video, it didn't come across that I was hating on them. I don't think, or it certainly seems when you hear about behind the scenes drama, it doesn't seem to usually be the developers who have the bad ideas. It's usually higher up than that. And then the developers are kind of forced to do certain things for financial reasons, for you know management reasons, for time crunch reasons, whatever the case may be. It doesn't mean that I'll stop criticizing the game. Gran Turismo, I'll I love it. I still criticize it. Likewise with Forza. You know, that's how you improve. You don't improve by just constantly praising something because if you just praise something forever, it stagnates. It needs to have something to work on to improve, etc. So 
hopefully it will continue to improve. Technically, even for me, today is an improvement if you want to look at it that way, because now the map is fully unlocked as it was supposed to be already. But yeah, definitely some, some teething issues, let's say at the very least. That's it for my experience though, for the update of stuff that you need to know for now. Give me your thoughts. Are you going to dive back in? Uh, I would imagine most of you probably will be thinking, hmm, maybe not yet. And I wouldn't blame you for that one, but we'll have to see what the future holds. Fingers crossed it gets better because I want to enjoy the game more. I certainly didn't buy it with the intention of wasting money. So of course I don't want to hate the game. I want to love the game. That's the whole point. So I'll see you next time with more. And for now, thanks for watching.